Really, I'd have to say um, we bought some new equipment, mm -hmm. uh, a new press, a new crusher to stemmer, um, a sorting table. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little bit more ability to um, go through those grapes and hand select more, more or less. And um, I'd have to say a little bit, well, you're, you're always learning, so you're always going to be doing uh, new yeasts mm -hmm. and seeing what works on which, which lots and which doesn't. And it always goes back to the vineyard, walking through the vineyard. That's the one area that um, uh, I've learned. We don't cut any costs out of going through those vineyards. And we're not afraid to drop a lot of fruit to ensure quality. And a lot of people will scratch their head and look at us, especially at late in the season, not this year, but in past years when you walk through and you see all this purple on the ground in the middle of those rows and we've cut off half the crop. But um, that's just one thing we're willing to go through. If we have to go through with our crew eight times, mm -hmm. we will. You know, so really, like I said before, I can't do magic here, and if it's not broke, I'm not going to try to fix it. We have a really unique style. We have quite a loyal following on our style of winemaking. Um, but the biggest key is dealing with Mother Nature and making the right decisions and um, learning how to finesse those grapes to the best of the ability that we can. And then when we bring them in here, they're clean fruit, they're optimally ripened. Makes my job a lot easier. I just kind of oversee the whole process. So no huge changes, little things. Little things to maybe finesse the wines, play with a little bit more blends, but nothing major. And so is your yield or your production volume on individual wines a little bit lower than it used to be then maybe? Yeah, yeah. which doesn't make my dad very happy. Yeah. <laughs> when he's penciling it out with the account, <laughs> they're looking at me going, hmm. <laughs> but, um, but it's it's just one of those things I just feel it's necessary, you know. Revenue per bottle can go up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We try to keep that minimal too, it, and it kind of price it. increasing. Yeah, we've we've learned to keep our prices um, fairly reasonable, mm -hmm. and um, the little bits of uh, price increases um, at a time, fifty cents to a dollar, is basically inflation or the cost of our production going up and that's that's the only thing that's really hard for us lately is those costs keep rising um, with regulations and compliance issues and then the euro I mean the foils um, come from Spain all the pork come from Portugal and um, all our barrels are coming from France it's just it, the dollar doesn't go as far as it used to so our costs keep going up and up and labor um, so it's really hard to only increase that much but we really don't want to drive our our customer away and, and we definitely don't want to overprice ourselves and ever have to back the price back down because it's not selling out so so we're, we're in a good situation where it seems like um, demand is always exceeding supply we sell out every year and uh, we just want to keep working it that way and that's why it's all family owned and operated and you're usually going to get one of us and we're by appointment we don't have a tasting room staff we don't do outside events we just we focus on winemaking and let people come to us. So, I'm curious about the yeasts and. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Go over. <laughs> and, and and how many different yeasts? Uh, yeast you might I, need? I like to play with and uh -huh. use. Um, I can do natural yeast, um, but I'm a little bit of a control freak. So, sure. <laughs> um, and since we do open top fermentation, um, and sometimes it's hard to control the temperatures. Um, I, I like to use some of the commercial yeast and my favorite ones um, that I source and that I know the biggest difference that maybe um, I've seen from my grandfather and my dad making wine is a little bit of the increase in alcohol and that's because we're probably picking the, um, the grapes a little bit riper. 25, 25.5 bricks is ideal. Um, they were picking them at 23 and a half to 24. So um, especially with Zinfandel which likes to stick, it's a very temperamental grape. Um, they've made a lot more um, higher alcohol adjusted yeast, so it gives me a whole plain field for the yeast, especially with Zinfandel because it's a tough grape to ferment. So, um, so yeah, I'm always open to trying, and it's really fun. Like I said, when you have 12 to 14 different lots, um, maybe the whole lot doesn't all come in at once. When I have 16 open top fermenters, um, I can go to each individual fermenter, and it's all, it might all be Zinfandel at one time, and all different yeasts mm. and that is exactly when I take notes and I can go in from one tank and just totally see the differences what the yeast have done with those grapes yeah so it's, it's kind good. of fun that's the learning part that um, a lot of people don't get to, to participate mm -hmm. where it all happens and we put the plastic up on the walls because it's a beautiful room and um, a lot of water and juice is going <laughs> everywhere and we don't care because we're always on a, on a 
mission at the time of year. So, um, so yeah, so this is, this is the only time. If you came back here in another month, I hope to have grapes in here, that's when you get all these beautiful aromas because of the open top. You can just, you're just, unless it's full of CO2, then you have to be careful. Because at peak fermentation, and when they're all full, you walk in this room, you're like, I got to turn my hands on because it's all CO2. Yeah, so you got to be careful. But yeah, so this is, this is where it all happens. And this is very old school style. There are the biggest ones are three ton fermenters, and um, yeah, so it's a lot by a lot, and uh, they all get individual attention. So, so really, when we crush, um, we crush about 200 tons total per year, and 70% of that is infantile. Um, but we only bring in so many tons, a few tons every morning. We only pick in the morning hours when it's really cool, and um, and bring. We don't pick all day. Can only handle so much, really. There's only so many of us. Yeah, so it's taking a little bit more of a skill to get the wax and the seal just right so they don't leak. And uh, believe it or not, uh, my crew and I, we all get in there and you have to do a lot of hand scrubbing because, uh, especially with the new wines, they have a lot of leaves and tartrates that'll stick to the sides and the bottom, you gotta hand, hand scrub it all out. You know, so. part of it, actually, don't it by yourself. No, 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 it's a big deal. You have to have someone on the outside. The, the one thing is they're usually finished wines when they're in here, so you don't have to worry about CO2 production, but um, you just can't be claustrophobic. You cannot get inside and be claustrophobic. That's the biggest thing. I don't think we can see that bowl. You be surprised. You be surprised. Look, olive oil. Can we push you in? Why not get out and then you get in trouble, right? Bottlings and everything. So, so I've, I've opened up a couple um, older wines. 